What a, what a world is your homeboy wordplay TJ and I'm back with another video for you. This time around I'm going to talk about how the quality of your music impacts your music career. Stay tuned. All right, so I just released an ebook called The Four P's to Starting Your Music Career. And, and basically, in this ebook, I start to explain all of the things that are most important to your career and getting your independent music career off the ground. One of the first things is the product. And when you're thinking about the product, you're thinking about yourself and what you're putting out to the world. So in this video, I want to give you a preview of the ebook. If you want to get it, the link is down in the description or up in the cards, and you can uh, go ahead and purchase that ebook for five bucks on my website. So let's go ahead and jump into the content. I'm going to talk about quality of your music. So the thing is, when making music, the quality of your music is one of the most important things to uh, bring to the market. At the end of the day, you're selling this music, so the quality of it has to be above the industry standard. But this is where people get things confused. So sometimes there is a subjective conversation about the music, which is varied by people's taste, and then there's an objective conversation about the music. What I'm talking about here is the objective quality. Is it good enough to be commercially viable? So a lot of people are going to tell you what they don't like, what they like about a song, or um, they're just going to give you some opinions based off of their perception of the song. And that's great, but what you have to be able to do is to figure out the difference between their subjective opinions, what is just kind of driven by their taste and what's driven by actual kind of objective musical reality. So when it comes to the objectivity, you want to think about these four things. So you want to think about the strength of the vocal performance. You want to think about the strength of the instrumentation, the mix, and the master quality of the final song. And there are some elements that are included in all of those things. So vocal performance, it's your tone, your pitch, your clarity. Uh, when instrumentation comes into play, you, it, it, the harmony, the rhythm, whether or not the, the pitch is right. And the last thing is the strength of the master. So is it competitive? Is it consistent? Does it stand up to every, everything else in the industry? So it's your job to make sure that you deliver a great product every single time. So how do you guarantee the quality of your music? You have to think about the three different categories that allow you to control quality of your music. Either you do it yourself, either you hire some professionals, or you do a hybrid of both. So if you do it yourself, the cost up front are all, you know, kind of front loaded. So you're going to have a lot of elements that you want to think about. The quality of your microphone, your speakers to listen to. Um, you want to think about your production software and equipment. Um, you want to make sure that you have the skills to even record yourself in the first place. Even the, the software that you use like Pro Tools or Logic. And all of that technology and those skills are going to cost you up front. So think about it. Like you're going to have to make make this sizable investment early on if you want to do it yourself. And that's not for everybody. Most people need to be in a place where they're willing to hire some professionals. So that's the next category. So all of your costs are on the back end and these professionals will assist you with the quality of your product. And this method overall just kind of saves you some time because I don't know about you, but it takes a long time to record. It takes a long time to mix, to produce, and all these other things that I do. And um, I don't know if everybody is about that life. There's also one other category that you can think about, and that is a hybrid. 
So the costs are blended, right? It's up and down depending on the situation, but maybe you do some things yourself like record at home and then you have somebody else mix and master the song. Again, it's a combination of that upfront cost and the back end cost that will kind of balance out your books. At the end of the day, the main goal is to make sure that you have a quality product. You're not putting out crap to the world. So the last thing I wanna to touch on is that everything that you do must pass a quality control test, right? So think about the vocal performance, think about the mix, think about the master, think about the instrumentation, think about every single thing that went into making this song. Does it stand up commercially? And if it doesn't, then maybe you should go back to the drawing board and think about the quality of your music. So my suggestion is always to put out as much quality music as you possibly can. Um, not to try to predict a hit record, but just to make sure that you're getting your, your sound out there and your brand out there and as much content as possible because when something does hit, then everybody will start to, well, not everybody, but most of your fans will start to go and dig into your back catalog. So that's it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. Be sure to go get this ebook. Check it out. The four P's to starting your independent music career. And until next time, it's your homeboy Wordplay TJ. Peace. All right, so the video is over now. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Let me know how you feel about it. And then watch more videos about the same subject up here. And then another video that YouTube recommends down here. Peace.